So we have brownie in. Careful. Do you need the tailgate up? We have dad feeding the sheep hay. In the meantime, we have the sheep loaded up, ready to go. It's in the back of the truck. He's making sure that it's not flipping around because when a sheep tends to jerk around in the back of a vehicle for a very long time, it can end up bruising its muscles to where it will be tough, so the meat will be tough. But here we are just looking at the sheep and we're gonna jump back into the guys where Brad and Dalvin have the sheep. All right, so here we have them backing up. Did your family often butcher during the winter? I don't think okay. so. No? Okay. It's always been in the summertime. Oh, okay. Yeah. So first time during the winter, except from last year when we did this? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I did it one of the first times when I, after we were married. We did it on New Year's, mm. New Year's Day. We have Paige who's ready to go. She's very helpful when it comes to this type of event that our family does. Lord bless the sheep. Thank you for the meat. Thank you for your blessing. Bless the sheep for our use, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. 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 Hi, Herb. How are you? <laughs> Good. Is this your first time butchering in the winter? Yes. Yes. Yes, I do. Oh. He does shout out. <laughs> Page, <laughs> and your Raiders. And Raiders. <laughs> oh, but they make playoffs. Oh, yeah. Two more games left. Yeah. Paige, shout out to Cowboys. Ah. This is for the stomach. Take that stomach out and. We're going to cover it with the skin. Okay. And then put the stomach the inside. Then we'll take it inside the house here. Uh-huh. And do the cleaning here. Okay. Because we're doing this in the winter, we're making do with what we have. Basically, we have a wheelbarrow. We're going to utilize it because it has a tire. She washed it out. Um, we're going to put the sheep sorry we're gonna put the sheep skin in the wheelbarrow so we can put the meat on it and everything and we can wheel it around very quickly so every family does this differently um every family has their own way to do this this is definitely not a one-size-fits-all and again i'm showing you from our family perspective um how we're doing this in the winter so there's no wrong way to do it you learn every year you learn every time from what you're doing um just how to do this and how to make it more smooth and how to get the process to be more um, fluid because it is cold we had the littles the littles <laughs> usually participate with us but they are inside i know hi guys um omi is so helpful with um cleaning out the tree i'm sorry baby you can't but she has the littles in there we also have the bigger boys inside it is way too cold out here two of them just got over a really hard cold so we're not gonna have them chance anything of being out here in the meantime we have mom starting to cut <laughs> yeah, Dalvin, can you vlog for me? No, <laughs> he's on no. Herb, do you want to vlog for me? <laughs> yeah, cameraman, right here. Uh -huh, yeah. Every person who is butchering, they have a preference with their knives. Even though you have a knife that's really sharp, there's knives that work even better. So having the sharpest or the most comfortable knife for you makes all the difference with butchering and skinning the skin off. If you have a very dull knife or a knife that's not sharp, it actually can hurt the animal in the process. So you want to make sure that you have a sharp knife, especially when you're cutting the head off.
And the technique you saw my mom just doing with her hand as she put her knuckles down with it, that is definitely something um, many people do as they're butchering. We need marshmallows now. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need coffee. Oh yeah, coffee. Yeah. Cowboy coffee. Yeah. Uh -huh. Soldiers. <laughs> uh -huh. Get the fire going. Uh, they, uh, yeah. Wood. Yeah. Nice day to butcher. Nice and clear. Yeah. Yeah. You never know. Oh really? Good, good, good. Contracts get smaller. Mm -hmm. So that way, you know that. That's why they they did that. They they get in the snow and they wash themselves with snow and because they want to keep their youthful look for a long time. Instead of using warm or hot water when you're washing your face in the morning in the uh, restroom, mm -hmm. use cold water. Ooh. Not really. Yeah, cold water. It helps to mm, keep your skin tight, not loose. Wow. See, they say if you use hot water, you're going to age real quick. Mm. You're going to see lines. So use cold water and get in the snow too, yeah. Like Herbert did. Yeah, Herb. Mm -hmm. yeah. Herb did a snow face wash. <laughs> Herbert, is our, Herbert is our neighbor mm -hmm. like across the street over there. Yeah. yeah. We're glad that you came out today, Herb. Yeah, very supportive. Yes. He says, go. Give you a hand. Yeah. <laughs> and and you hand. better help us eat, too. <laughs> Please help us. <laughs> Why don't you yeah. come over in uh, with the your, van? Your brother's truck? With the <clears> van. <throat> oh, okay. That was the van. Oh, it's on the... Oh. <laughs> Crank it in the morning. Those timers. Oh, yeah. You ready? Aqua. Aqua means right there. It's good. Growing up, you've butchered many times in the winter. Mm -hmm. So we have Brad finishing up the butchering process. In the meantime, we have Paige packing in the hole that we used. So that's what Paige is doing. While they were butchering, Delvin was tending to this fire, just adding new wood on. We want to make sure and keep an eye on the fire. We don't want it to go out because it's an integral part of the whole butchering process. That is where we will be cooking our food. Yes, who? Get this knife out. When you are butchering, you want to wear your That's oldest, um, okay. your oldest attire. Uh, so you don't want to get your clean clothes or nice clothes dirty. I think that's common sense, but I just no. want to throw that out there. We're going to have all of the meat fall out onto the wool, the smooth side of the wool. And the reason why you want to do this quickly when it's winter is because when you're cleaning out the organs and the intestines and the stomach, um, it's warm enough to where the poop can easily slide out. So all the bowels will slide out and well, it's not going to be pregnant. stuck. That's good. So we will show you that yeah, this sheep was not it. pregnant. So it's really nice that she was not pregnant. Sometimes you will find that the sheep was actually indeed pregnant and that's really really sad, but this one is not pregnant. I 
this inside. So we are doing this to make do with what we have. Um, it is very cold today. Um, we have wind. So we have put the table inside this storage house. I will zoom out so you can see this. Every residence, every family does things differently. You do it for your family how it works best. If this setup does not work for you, you will have a setup that works for you. And if you haven't thought of something like this and you see it, you're like, oh, maybe I should try it that way. We always can learn. We can always learn from how we do things, how we see others doing things. And that's the nice part of this whole process. So let's go inside. Normally we would be taking the poop out and we would just dump it out in the trees and the sand, but we are using this bucket inside. We have the heater going on right there. Pour into the um, cup. And everyone's just kind of making mm -hmm. do. It's really, really important for the lady because she knows the whole process. So she's able to pass down her teachings all through here. We have my mom, my sister, and my niece. So in this area alone, we have three different um, areas of life who are helping in this process. And it usually does that throughout every family when they're butchering. Normally, we would have my children out here who are also learning and helping too. But because they're getting over a cold and it's so cold outside, we left them inside and we're looking at this process now so this right here is called the intestine and it's what makes the itch eat I'm gonna put this bucket here that way it serves better purpose for both of them while you're working we have to be quick but we're also trying to be very effective and there's also a lot of teaching going on so in this event sometimes you hear people kind of being a little bit abrupt like quick hurry up and they don't mean anything um mean or anything it's just in the moment you're you're teaching people you have to be quick so a lot goes on throughout this whole time the more hands, the better, but doesn't mean you need a lot of people. You just need people who can really work fast. So as long as you have people who want to learn and want to help, that's what makes this whole process even better. Oh, don't Okay. Okay, start from the middle again. Start from the middle. Not to get cold too with this piece here. The stomach too, this one. Is this home? Yeah. Jenny, I should work for you. Down there. <laughs> When I was um, filming, I saw the sheep way in the distance. So I told my dad, look who's been watching us. And he got down and then him and Herb thought I was talking about a coyote, but I was talking about the sheep way over there. Okay, so this area just looks like back to normal. We covered the hole back up. We have the blood still in the bowl, but other than that, it's like nothing ever happened. Okay, so now we have the meat hanging on this loom stand. This is actually a loom stand that we just put, um, we cleaned it and then we put aluminum foil on top of it so we could hang the meat. Now this is called the ka, and these are the ribs, the mutton ribs, um, the leg, and I believe that's the arm. But we have all this out and we have the fire going. The sun came out, we could feel the warmth a little. Still cold, but not as cold because I think the wind died down too a little. Yeah, yeah. it's really good. It's coming together. Good. We're just glad it's not snowing really hard. Yellow cornmeal, coffee, and ribs. So this part is also important. We put the grills over the fire because it's charring it, it's burning it, all of the debris that are on it, whether that be um, dust, um, weather increments, anything just that you know comes onto the grill, this fire is killing it all and basically kind of like sanitizing it. I think almost every Navajo has a certain butcher jacket they like to wear. This is Delvin's. That's my dad's. 
that's Brad's. <laughs> and I think everyone has that. This is the stomach. Mm -hmm. It's called a bid. A bid. A bid. So they are charring it, they're placing it on the fire because of the process that it does right now is it's burning the wool off. The type of wood you choose for your fire is also important. So this type of wood here, it, it burns very slow. Um, that's probably the type of um, wood to have in your stove like throughout the night so it could burn slowly. Um, but it would not be good for this instance right now. So the type of wood you choose is also important. Every person hangs the um, skin wool somewhere. We hung it on top of this little building. Because we couldn't take the intestine out into the woods like we did in our last video we showed last year, or how we normally do it anyways, we had to put it in the bucket. So now what we're doing is we're taking the bucket out to the woods, and you can see that pile of green over there. That is where we're dumping all of the bowels, the waste. Right now, I can smell the sheep head. I can smell it. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So this grill is pretty hot. They are gonna clean it off and we're gonna put on top of the fire to get it ready for the meat to go on. This specific grill is actually really meaningful to us because my brother Brad, his sister, um, his sister, her for her late husband made this grill for us. He was so great with making all different types of things. He was great with welding, and um, may he rest in peace. And you know, we just think of him. He was very talented, very skillful, and we will forever take care of these items that he made for us. So we still think of him, we still appreciate him, and thank you. Thank you, Fred. That was for Fred. For Tsikapa? <laughs> I totally missed this guys I'm so sorry they already got the eat wrapped up that was requested by my brother Leland so we have the eat we have the a bib mom are we doing a deli style okay There are certain parts that we don't use, and Paige is going to go take that to her dog. <laughs> this one. <laughs> yeah, that can go too. This? Um, yeah, that too. So this is part of the heart. You can see the left atrium, the right atrium. This Aww. one can go through the... And then the chambers are down here. I miss the classes. Just kidding. <laughs> That's your anatomy right there. That's how it looks. So this is how the inside looks. Mm. Oh, wow. Oh, Brownie had a beautiful heart. <laughs> Thank you, Brownie. Yeah. Oh, 
That's my dad's new Christmas toy. <laughs> it's so cute. My husband sent that to my dad so he could just like cut the little wood up in front of the house. Instead of taking out his bigger chainsaw, he has that small accessible one that he can just cut little pieces with. So it's really cute. <laughs> it's like a toy. That's cute. And the guys will say, well, that's not a chainsaw. <laughs> oh my gosh. Dad added garlic and now he's adding rosemary. Rosemary cheese. Oh. <laughs> Shout out to all the rosemaries. What's that one? Oh, rosemary still. Black, black pepper, Corn. ground pepper. Hot, huh? I know I could feel the heat from here too. Time. It's time for time. Oh yeah. It's time for time. Our family really loves seasonings and herbs, so you can never go wrong with um, oregano, thyme, rosemary, salt, pepper, and garlic. A lot of people are hungry out there now. Yeah, a lot of people say, I'm hungry. <laughs> hey guys, if you're drooling right now, like the video and drop a comment. <laughs> Here, Grandma Chantel used to stick her hand in the flames when she was turning her fry bread. Oh my gosh. have mom inside making the dough for the tea kappa. Inside we have the bread going on. It's kind of chaotic in the house as well. We have mom making the bread. We have Leland cutting up the veggies. We have scallions, uh, cauliflower, cabbage. So we have Lou right here cutting up the potatoes for the stew. Now we have these dishes here that they were cleaned outside, but we're going to clean them again just to um, sanitize it.
Do we have a bowl? Um, oh, right here. Tailgate party. <laughs> Tailgate party. The sun came out. Oh, yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. Nice. There's the sun. So right now they're warming up the ground so we can put the sheep head in. After we done eating, probably put the sheep head on. Oh yeah. By that time. Oh yeah. Let it get hot. Yeah. Okay, so as you heard the men, um, we're going to let that get really hot and we're going to go inside and eat and then we'll come back out and do the sheep head. Mm -hmm. Maybe another 15 minutes. Alright, so we have Brad flipping the meat over. He's turning it over. We have most of the food done already. The majority is inside. Oh my gosh, the smoke is tense. But we have most of the food inside and we're ready to get this scrub down. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Comment below what your favorite part of the butchering process is. Delvin threw snow on me, so I'm trying to get it off. <laughs> he said he said he was blessing me with snow. It's cold and we have all the food going, so we're gonna head inside now. So this is the spine of the sheep, mm -hmm. and mom is breaking it down. Yeah, breaking the backbone down so she can freeze these for a later use. Okay, so we also have another component which is cornmeal, and this is really helpful because it helps offset the jitters. Sometimes if you're not accustomed to eating mutton and how potent it is, it can have your hands start to shake. So if you have something like cornmeal or you can add a little bit of sugar, brown sugar with it, it really helps tame down those jitters. We have the tikka bah right here. We have fresh veggies all cut up, asparagus, scallions, onions, celery all in here. We have the potatoes here, and they're all going to go in that very large pot for the stew. So clean in that oh. I can't have my kale. Oh, disappointed I can't have my lettuce wrap <laughs> kale roast mutton sandwich. So now we have the food going and everyone is just gonna go chow down. It's ready to go. Nice and wrapped. So now we are going to surround it with some hot ash. Okay, put the dirt in these. Okay. Okay, let's wait 
sort of water. And then uh, I'll pour it down in here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then uh, and the steam will, will, the steam will get in there. Mm -hmm. Put water in there. Watch your hair. Yeah, Ready? watch your arm, Dad. Okay. Seal it, seal it. Okay. Oh, that is good. Mm -hmm. Good fire. Mm -hmm. Good campfire. Oh, it's so warm. Mm -hmm.